हेलो डियर स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम टू बाजीरा वाई एस अकेडमी इंटरव्यू गाइडेंस प्रोग्राम सो इन टू डेज लेक्चर वी आर गोइंग टू लर्न अबाउट अ न्यू कॉन्सेप्ट कॉल्ड यूनिवर्सल बेसिक इनकम ओके सो यू मे हैव कम अक्रॉस दिस यूनिवर्सल बेसिक इनकम वेरी ऑफन राइट सो सेवरल पोलिटिकल पार्टीज हैव सजेस्टेड दैट दे विल इंट्रोड्यूस यूनिवर्सल बेसिक इनकम इफ दे आर वोटेड टू पावर in fact apart from india there are several other countries which already implemented this universal basic income program so in this context we will understand what is universal basic income scheme actually so what does this mean for a country like india and how it will help transform the lives of the poor and apart from that we will also understand certain challenges in the implementation of schemes like universal basic income since this topic has a lot of relevance for your upsc interview there is a need to discuss this topic now firstly you have to understand what exactly is the meaning of universal basic income so before actually discussing or learning about this concept right so universal basic income is actually defined as a fixed minimum minimum income that is given by the government to every adult in india okay so every adult citizen will receive a fixed minimum amount of money from the government so this is what is called as universal basic income right so the government actually aims to cover around 75 percentage of india's population through universal basic income so universal basic income is actually suggested by the economic survey 2017 right so it would be good to uplift the poor if the government implements uni universal basic income program and this program will cover 75 percentage of india's population okay so to lift all poor all the people who are below poverty line and the it is fixed that around 7620 rupees will be transferred to every adult citizen of this country so this is what briefly universal basic income right so in this context why ubi is in use why universal basic income is in use so it is in use because it can strengthen the welfare architecture and it can also unlock country's huge demographic dividend potential so we all know that if you carefully understand the population at the working age it is around 28.5 years okay so this is median age india's median age and apart from that india also has the distinction that we have the youngest population so we can be a reliable supply source of uh you know man power to the aging economies there are several aging economies like japan so therefore we will be a reliable source of man power so therefore in this context ubi can strengthen existing the welfare architecture as well as help uh, you know uh, realizing nations demographic potential as well so in this context if we go into the detail of universal basic income right so earlier i have suggested that i have told you that it is an income support mechanism typically intended to reach all or a very large section of the population regardless of their earnings as well as their employment status so this is what universal basic income actually means now what is the objective of universal basic income okay the government is planning to launch universal basic income or economic survey has suggested the government to implement a scheme like universal basic income now what is the objective we have to understand the objective as well so the objective is to provide enough to cover the basic cost of living and providing financial security or safety nets for the population so this is the objective of the universal ba basic income so however universal basic income has certain principles we need to understand what are those principles for implementation of the universal basic income so firstly ubi is universal so it will be provided for all 
all the people who are below poverty line right so it covers around 75 percentage of india's population so this is this can be equated with india's public distribution system okay so public distribution system under national food security act has also providing food grains to the large chunk of india's population and apart from that an unconditional transfer of money to every adult citizen okay so after that the third principle is a periodic transfer of money as well as the cash payment so the payment will be done in cash mode so these are the principles the fundamental principles of the universal basic income okay so after that we have to understand these principles these fundamental principles in a, a bit detailed way so firstly when we say that universal basic income is actually universal it will be paid to everyone right so it will be paid to the every adult citizen of our country and it will be it will not be targeted program okay so it will not target any section of the population rather it will be provided for every citizen of our country the second most important principle is it is periodic in nature now when we say that it is a periodic in nature it is a recurrent payment rather than one off grant so i hope you know the basic difference the fundamental difference between grant that is one time payment which is being given by the government to uh, you know government to government government to citizen or government to any organization since it is periodic it is actually considered as a recurrent payment method now after that it is a cash payment right so you know the benefits of the universal basic income is actually paid in cash and it allows the recipients to use it as they may like so in whatever way they wanted to use it they can use it and the fourth fundamental principle with respect to universal basic income is actually unconditional nature of this cash transfer okay so this does not involve any conditions or any conditionality so you know everyone equally benefited from this universal basic income program after that it is paid to individual or it is paid on individual basis rather than household basis so there are certain programs which are paid on household basis for example when we talk about ayushman bharat ayushman bharat this is also paid in on household basis okay so apart from ayushman bharat pm kisan is also paid on household basis okay so however ubi is actually paid on individual basis now after that uh, we have to understand in a bit more detailed way that ubi provides a monthly stipend okay so every month a certain sum of money will be provided to every adult citizen of our country okay so it provides monthly stipend that would ensure that the person would be above the poverty line so person will not be below the poverty line so i hope you have a basic idea about the uh, persons who are below poverty line and above poverty line so the world bank of in, uh, uh, world bank has determined the criteria so if a person earning less than uh, 1.9 dollar per day so he would be considered as a person below poverty line so if government provides a minimum amount of stipend every month then certainly it will help the government uplift the people who are earning less or people who are at the bottom so therefore it will help uplift the people from the below poverty line and it will also further strengthen or enhance the other source of income for the people okay so universal basic income is actually a minimum income guarantee okay so a minimum income guarantee scheme and it is actually provided by the government and it is based on the discretion of the government so you know it is decided by the government to whatever way uh, whatever amount of money the government will pay at the time uh, you know at that time so it completely depends on the discretion of the government okay so it can be equal more less than the poverty line expenditure so it can be any sum of amount
so however the government will reduce its expenditure on various welfare programs when it is providing direct cash benefit to the citizens okay and we can also say that it can reduce certain leakages it can also reduce certain leakages because through direct benefit transfer this money directly credited into the beneficiary's bank account now after that we have to talk about the significance of universal basic income so what is the significance of universal basic income firstly resource management so, okay so efficient resource management now the universality and unconditionality this these are some of the fundamental principles of universal basic income that we have already discussed so the universality and unconditionality of this particular program ensures that the government will not spend time and resources in assessing eligibility and potential beneficiaries so this is a major problem because uh, there are challenges like exclusion errors and ghost beneficiaries now since this scheme is provided for every citizen of this country so resource management would be a better aspect here because it is universal and there is no conditions which are as attached to this program so after that we need to talk about the poverty reduction aspect as well now how we can reduce poverty so universal basic income usually provide monthly stipend to every individual so individuality is also one of the fundamental principles of ubi so therefore if a person has been earning very less and through ubi the government provides some certain sum of money as a stipend so therefore you know it brings everyone above the poverty line and giving people enough money for their basic needs as well as necessities so it will help them meet their basic necessities you know what are the basic necessities food clothing and uh, you know uh, some health care education so these are some of the basic necessities so it will help those people who are at the bottom uh, you know so they will uh, you know they will meet the basic necessities now basic income pilot in hyderabad so work free work free has been increased health insurance coverage among the participants so this is actually a basic income pilot project in hyderabad so that is also a, some sort of a you know universal basic income pilot project now after that we have to understand few more significant aspects with respect to universal basic income so universal basic income will also helps uh, in fight against unemployment okay so because when the government provides uh, you know stipend to every individual on monthly basis so that uh results in security net for the million of people okay so uh you know in india also there are a number of people who left job who still jobless okay so particularly because of the tech revolution they are still considered as unemployed so therefore it provides some sort of a security net for those unemployed individuals and it will fight the problem of unemployment so we cannot say that it will completely done away with the uh, you know unemployment the problem of unemployment completely address the problem of unemployment rather it helps in fight against unemployment and it can also be used to promote self employment okay so you know how can we use universal basic income to promote self employment uh, you know this will certainly help in developing human resources apart from human resources skill development entrepreneurship so everything so therefore this scheme will also help in self development of self employment or promote self employment among citizens and increase employment opportunities in the country and how it can promote entrepreneurship so it would cover the risks involved in starting a new business since ubi covers the risks which involved in starting a new uh, you know business and it will also foster the entrepreneurial ideas in the country so it also promotes social empowerment because it guarantees minimum amount of income for non working parents and even for the caregivers as well
so therefore there are certain unpaid roles in our economy and it will give importance to those unpaid roles especially for women so they were thereby it says that they recognizing the unpaid roles especially women as a caregivers and it will also give a lot of impetus for the development of social capital as well you know there are certain universal basic income programs across the world okay so these programs uh, actually shown that uh, you know people being able to invest better in housing healthcare education and even for the savings and when there are increased amount of savings so that will certainly have a multiplier effect on the economy so apart from having a multiplier effect on the economy so when they are investing in housing healthcare education that will certainly improve human capital and people will also be able to meet their minimum necessities minimum necessities so that is the essence of you know human development so human development attracts investments and the existing uh, resources existing capital can be used in a more efficient and effective manner now when we uh, talk about seva okay uh, you know uh, self employed women association right so this is self employed women association is seva so it is a pilot project that is being launched by maharashtra revealed that cash transfers helped in increase school enrollment ratios from 69.6 percentage to 70.6 percentage so direct cash transfers to the parents uh, helped in increasing the school enrollment ratios so we also have targets of 100% school enrollment ratios okay at different levels primary level pre primary primary secondary higher secondary so uh, at different levels so therefore cash transfers under universal basic income will help improve the school enrollment ratios as well so uh, in fact what is the basis of universal basic income in india okay so if you carefully understand the basis even though it is not yet implemented but economic survey in the year 2017 has suggested that india should implement universal basic income and a minimum income of 7620 rupees per annum should be provided to every adult citizen without any conditionalities and this scheme should be applicable you know uh, 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 in a universal manner now in this context we have to understand certain challenges with respect to universal basic income so what are those challenges now firstly we need to talk about the fiscal uh, feasibility of the governments whether the state government or the central government now you know the fiscal deficit is one of the major problem that the government has been facing so when the government has been transferring such a huge amount of money directly into the bank accounts of the people so that will cost the government around 5 to 10 percentage of its gdp 5 to 10 percentage of the gdp so the government has not even investing in the capital expenditure or capital assets creating the capital assets so therefore in this context this could have adverse impact on the fiscal capacity of the states and it could even increase fiscal deficit fiscal deficit as well so therefore we have to look into the fiscal feasibility and the pattern of sharing between the center and states in case ubi has been implemented in india after that we need to talk about the economic burden as well okay so you know so the funds which are required for the universal basic income have to be raised through increasing taxes and cutting other important expenditures for example we need to cut important welfare expenditure in order to finance for the universal basic income so that the government should not afford social welfare spending especially on education health care and gender inequality gender equality agriculture infrastructure so all these factors are very important that the government cannot Uh, overlook the social welfare spending or important public expenditure 
so therefore it will create a huge economic burden on the part of the government as well and in fact the ubi will also distort labor market because now ubi is independent of work status whether a person is working or he is unemployed but since it is universal and since no conditions are attached to the universal basic income every individual will get a certain amount of money into his or her bank account so therefore it might reduce motivation and incentive for the work education and skill development for the individuals so apart from that we need to talk about the dependency as well so ubi would create a culture of dependency a dependency culture would not be good for the economy right and people uh, you know are not ready to work people are not ready to uh, further strengthen their existing skills reskilling upskilling will definitely gets impacted so demographic dividend will become demographic dividend actually a boon for india and it can become a bane that india cannot afford at this point of time okay so it could create a debt and it could further increase the expenditures as well so these are major challenges that are being associated with the universal basic income so however there are number of countries across the world they have already implemented universal basic income to a certain degree now us alaska permanent fund distributes a part of its state's oil revenues to the all residents on per capita basis so this is one example uh, where in us alaska permanent fund that distributes a certain amount of money from oil revenues to all the citizens uh, on the per capita basis and stockton in california so it has secured funding from private non profits to launch a small project with about 100 participants receiving around 500 million receiving around 500 dollar a month for about 18 months and in fact finland has also launched one such ubi and this scheme was launched in the year 2017 and it will pay 2000 jobless people an assistance of 560 dollar a uh, euro a month and it has uh, you know now finland has not implementing this program now in kenya there was a largest experiment of ubi that is in still underway with some villages receiving uh, you know around 1 dollar or half a dollar so brazil has run this uba experiments as well canada so canada in ontario plans to test a basic income scheme so apart from that there are number of uh, countries like france uk scotland barcelona british switzerland so all these countries have one or other universal basic income programs so there is also thought that india should implement this ubi program now in this context we have to understand certain pros and cons of universal basic income so firstly it will address poverty and vulnerability of certain sections of the people and it will reduce poverty and vulnerability secondly it will provide more choice to citizens on spending third a better targeting of aid so it will be provided for every individual every adult citizen and it can be considered as insurance against shocks and it is a social capital right so this is a social capital so apart from that it will boost the financial inclusion and it is a psychological aid to the people and more administrative efficiency can be achieved through this ubi program so if we talk about certain cons of the implementation of ubi a gender disparity induced by the cash and fiscal cost given political economy of exit and conspicuous spending okay so discretionary spending or ir illogical irrational spending it could put stress on banking system as well okay so you know how it could put a uh, stress on the banking system because you know transferring such a huge sum of money to everyone's bank account certainly have impact on inflation so we have a inflation targeting mechanism okay so inflation of 4% plus or minus 2 percentage upper and lower tolerance bands so inflation may not be under control of the central bank 
and political opposition to transfers to rich people even ubi has a universal transfer of this amount of money to all the people so it it will also include the rich people as well so therefore they will there is a political opposition to transfer and also exposure to market risks and reduction in labor supply as well because there's lack of motivation on the part of workers to work if they receive annual or monthly stipend now in this context we have to talk about way forward so what lies ahead so the challenges that we have discussed now in implementation of ubi should be tackled should be dealt with and we should design a ubi program universal basic income program so that should be affordable feasible efficient equitable apart from that it should be acceptable for all and secondly there should be a robust support systems to complement universal basic income such as healthcare education so this will ensure better utilization of the money so this is all about the universal basic income right so i hope you have get uh, you know basic understanding about what does universal basic income so what are the benefits what are the significance of universal basic income what are the challenges what are the countries which have implemented universal basic income certain pros and cons and way ahead as well okay so that's all for this lecture and thank you so please like our video if you really like our work and also comment your suggestions and doubts in the comment section so that we can answer those questions thank you